Hey everyone, it's Alisa with a step two question for you. Go ahead and pause it here, do it on your own, and then come back and we'll do it together. A 45-year-old woman comes to the physician for a health maintenance exam. She has had generalized fatigue and muscle aches for the last six months. She has a past medical history of hypertension and migraines. Current medications include amlodipine and sumatriptan. Vitals show a temperature of 37 Celsius, pulse of 92, and blood pressure of 152 over 105. Physical exam is within normal limits. Serum studies show a sodium of 144, a potassium of 2.3, chloride of 99, a calcium of 8.9, a BUN of 16, and a creatinine of 1.1. Her blood pressure medication is discontinued, and five days later, her plasma aldosterone concentration is 45, uh, with the normal being between 3.6 and 24. Plasma renin activity is 0.39, with the normal being 0.3 to 4.2. An oral sodium loading test over three days fails to reduce aldosterone. A contrast enhanced CT of the abdomen and pelvis shows a three centimeter homogeneous right sided adrenal mass with rapid contrast washout. She's canceled about her treatment options and she chooses to pursue surgery. Great choice. Uh, which of the following is the most appropriate next step in management? So full body CT scan, aka a pan CT, MRI of the abdomen and pelvis, coronal lactone therapy, triamterine therapy, a fludrocortisone suppression test, adrenal vein sampling, a unilateral adrenalectomy, or a bilateral adrenalectomy. Now, let's think about this patient. She's a young female. She has symptoms of hypokalemia, hypo, hypernatremia, and hypertension. Automatically, these two things make you think, oh, aldosterone issue. And then they give it to you. They give you that it's high aldosterone and low renin. And then they even give you the fact that a CT scan confirms a mass. So this question did a lot of the thinking for you. Great, you know that she probably has primary hyperaldosteronism. Now, what is the classic diagnostic step to do before surgical intervention? It's a board's favorite. So our options are a full body CT scan. We're not gonna, you pretty much will never see, especially on board exams, the answer be a pan CT scan, um, unless it's an extreme trauma and the patient is somehow stable. Um, if you wanted to see if there are metastasis, then you would probably use a positron emission topography, which is a PET CT scan. An MRI of the abdomen and pelvis is a confirmatory test for adrenal abnormalities. However, this patient already had a positive CT scan and CT scan is better at detecting tumors, um, especially adrenal tumors, because you can capture the arterial and venous phases based on how you time the contrast, which is a lot more helpful than an MRI. Spironolactone therapy, aka uh, aldosterone receptor antagonists, are common treatments for primary hyperaldosteronism. Um, however, this patient already told us she wants to do surgery, so we don't really need to do that right now. Also, this is a good treatment. These two drug treatments are great for patients with bilateral adrenal disease where you simply cannot do a bilateral adrenalectomy. So triamterine, as a reminder, uh, acts as the aldosterone-sensitive sodium channel. Um, however, it also doesn't affect uh, the effects of hyperaldosteronism outside of the kidney. So we would, if we had to choose a drug, we would choose bronolactone. Now, a fludrocortisone suppression test confirms the diagnosis of primary hyperaldosteronism if the initial screening labs are a little bit abnormal. So you're thinking, oh, is this something adrenal? Is this something endocrine? I might uh, do a suppression test. However, this test is likely not to be done because it's easy to do a oral or IV salt loading test, which she also had done. Now, adrenal vein sampling, what is that? Um, adrenal vein sampling is indicated in a patient with primary hyperaldosteronism who opts for surgical management and either has a normal unilateral bilateral abnormality on CT, already our patient. So the purpose of this test is to confirm that what you see on CT scan is in fact the reason this patient has primary hyperaldosteronism and it's not just an incidental loma which is common in patients over 35. So let's say this patient had a primary hyperaldosteronism and you do the adrenal vein sampling on the incidentaloma and you find that you don't have high 
uh, aldosterone in that renal vein. What does that mean? That means that could be the side with an incidental loma and the other adrenal gland is the reason that you have hyperaldosteronism. And then maybe on CT scan, you just didn't see the nodule or um, it was too small to detect um, on CT and the other adrenal gland is the problem. So you prevent yourself giant malpractice lawsuit if you remove the correct kidney and adrenal vein sampling is how you figure out excuse me not kidney adrenal vein. don't remove the kidney um, with adrenal vein sampling you figure out which adrenal gland is the issue and is there really an issue do we need to remove this gland uh, so this is vital and then uh, right adrenalectomy again even though we see that there's a nodule on the right, if we don't do adrenal vein sampling, how do we know that that nodule isn't just an incidental loma or something else? And a bilateral adrenalectomy is most definitely not indicated uh, without prior testing because this patient might then need lifelong leukocorticoid and mineralocorticoid therapy. And if you have bilateral disease, I mentioned this earlier, at that point, you're just gonna give medication to control it. So the answer is adrenal vein sampling. You want to know, is there actually an issue? Where is the issue um, before you do surgery? So here's a very nice little uh, graphic of what you want to do when you're measuring, um, when you're suspecting hyperaldosteronism, what do you want to measure, uh, what tests do you want to do? And I found this on AMBOSS, which is a great resource. So uh, just quickly to go through it, you want to look at plasma aldosterone concentration and then plasma renin activity. So if both are increased, you're thinking secondary hyperaldosteronism, so things like a renal artery stenosis. Uh, if you only have increased aldosterone and not renin, and that aldosterone to renin ratio is greater than 20, you're thinking primary hyperaldosteronism. So you're th primary in endocrine means that uh, the organ itself, so in this case, the adrenal gland uh, has an issue. So you wanna do an adrenal CT um, and then adrenal renal sampling, uh, go on from there. And if they're both decreased, then maybe you have exogenous um, mineralocorticoid usage, maybe you have Cushing's, so you're gonna work up uh, that side. So I hope this was helpful and we'll see you next week.